And welcome to Union University Basketball. Steve Beverly with you. And tonight it's a single game. It's the men taking on McKendree University, which has been in the past a very strong non-conference rival for the Bulldogs. And Coach Dave Niven is here to join us for a preview of tonight's contest. Dave, before we get into that, as we always do, look back at the previous game. And Saturday was just a complete game uh, as you took on and managed to defeat uh, a, a Delta State team that every, anytime Mike Neenaber comes to town, you know it could be strong and it could be a, a threat, but you won it 73 to 50, and it just seemed like everything was clicking. I, I thought uh, I thought we we defended really well. Um, you know, they had, they had 38 points with about two minutes to go, and uh, uh, really, really one of our better nights defensively. We had 30 deflections and, and got our hands on a lot of balls, um, made it difficult on them to score. And, uh, you know, our offense still isn't where, where we'd like it to be. Uh, but, but we do feel like we, we have the ability to win some games with, with defense. And that was, that was certainly the case on Saturday. Well, anytime that you can hold an opponent, I don't care what the opposition, you hold them to 50. Uh, you got to feel good about that. But, uh, again, you had a strong afternoon from Bo Gidgel, Jalen Johnson, and Ty Park. You just named everybody across the board. And one of the things that I think is really interesting is that you have largely balanced scoring on this team that anybody can step up and actually uh, contribute. Yeah, we're, we're playing a lot of guys and, and have confidence in a lot of guys. Um, you know, s- Saturday was, uh, was, was that kind of a day. Um, Bo, Bo had a nice, a nice game. Um, you also had uh, Jeremiah had a really good weekend. Ty Parks, uh, another big game for us coming off of an injury. Um, so it was, it was good. Um, I do feel like you never know who's, who, who's going to be the guy on any given night. And, uh, you know, as our guards continue to, to improve, um, I think, I think you'll see them, them having some more big nights as well. So, uh, Jalen played well over the weekend and, uh, uh, JT had a bunch of assists over the weekend. So it's been, uh, it's been, it's been good to see a bunch of guys getting involved and in, in doing different things. You told me before the homecoming exhibition game that you don't have many opportunities with 24 conference games to play a non-conference, but you wanted them to be tough. And I remember any time McKendry has come in here in the past, dating back to the Harry Statham days uh, when, when he coached that for so many years, there was always something tough on the floor taking on McKendry. Tell us what you know about this year's edition. Yeah, this is, good. This is a good team. Um, they've got a lot of guys back from last year, a team that beat us when we had a really good team. And so um, I think they'll have our players' attention for sure. Uh, but – but they can uh, they can really score. They they present some challenges to you defensively uh, that we haven't seen. Um, just a completely different style of play than than what we've had to defend so far this season. Um, a lot of screens. Um, Going to have to be really solid on, on our ability to to get through and avoid screens. Um, and then they're a good defensive team. They can create turnovers. They really do a nice job of of collapsing on guys. Uh, when, when, when you put the ball on the floor and, and, uh, so we'll need to be able to take care of the basketball, but, uh, but I think this is a good team. I, I think, you know, between them and Mississippi college, it might be a toss up between who, who's the best team that we we've, we've played so far. And, and, uh, and th- these guys will certainly present some challenges. I know. Wish you a lot of good luck tonight and we're looking forward to a really fine game. Thanks, Steve. And now live from Fred DeLay Gymnasium on David Blackstock Court, here we go with Union University basketball, and let's give you the starting lineups. First for the McKendry Bearcats, coached by George Suggs, and they're 1-2 and two on the season. Eric Powell II, an outstanding senior, averaging 17 a game from Lexington, Kentucky. Caleb Zerlini. He is a transfer from Purdue Northwest, averaging nine a game. Alexander Davitkov, he is from Serbia, and he is a 6'1 senior, averaging nine a game. Bryson Boltman, 
is another of the top seniors on this team. He's averaging 16 a game from Nashville, Illinois. And Milos Vicentic. Vicentic is a junior also from Serbia, averaging 17 a game. they got a tall front line. Their three big guns are averaging 49 a game. Let's flip over and look at the union. Bulldogs starting the same five tonight. J.T. DeBuck, who comes in tonight from Broward County, Florida. And J.T. does so many things with the ball, averaging eight a game. Jalen Johnson, he's from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And Jalen averaging 11 a game. Bo Gidgel, the big guy from Los Angeles, California. And Bo, he's averaging 16 a game. Jeremiah Littlepage with a 10.5 point average from down in Birmingham. And then there's Ty Parks. He missed one game due to injury, but he's still averaging 19.7 per game to lead the Bulldogs. And Ty is from Pocahontas, Tennessee. And those are your starting lineups for tonight. We're looking forward uh, to a great intersectional matchup between McKendry, which is from Lebanon, Illinois, and Union that has really been on a tear the last couple of games, and they want to keep this up, but this is going to be a tall order in this non-conference game. I'm going to head downstairs to do a little business, and then I'll be right back after the national anthem.
And here we go as the Bulldogs are being introduced. Here's JT DeBuck. JT has a 40% shooting average from outside the arc. And here you go with Jalen Johnson, the graduate transfer who's done such a tremendous job this season already. Bo Gidgel. I love his name. It's like Bo Diddley in the classic rock era. Jeremiah Littlepage. I'll say hi to his mom again as we do every time out. And Ty Parks, who if he gets on a roll from outside, he is going to be nonstop. And those are your starters, and it is a men's only game tonight, and we hope you're going to enjoy it. I want to welcome all the fans from McKendry who might be tuning in, and we look forward to having you with us all the way here, whether you're moms and dads or uh, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, or brothers and sisters, or just good friends. Glad to have you aboard from Illinois watching tonight or for wherever you are. Glad to see those who are watching us in Canada on the Roku app tonight on the Stream On app. And this game is brought to you by Worthy Road Studios, your finest in video production in West Tennessee. And to jump it, it's going to be Caleb Zerlini against Bo Gidgel. And let the games begin. The tip goes to McKendry. This is just really a, an outstanding unit here that they have. That, uh, there are so many things they do so well. They've got a very, very quick tempo. And they're going to work one-on-one -on -one against Little Page. And that was a nice job by Milos Vicentic, the Serbian. And you can see why he has such a hot average this season at 17. McKendry, one and two. Union, three and one. Little Page, who's always looking to dish off. And there you go. A nice one from JT to Buck to tie it up at two. Chance of defense. And going into the lane and sliding hard was Eric Powell, the second. Now, let me take that back. That was actually Zerlini who took the slide, so they're going to take it out underneath. And Union with a steal. And Little Page tries the floater and just cannot get it to fall to Ty Parks. Oh, my goodness. That would have been one of the most beautiful plays to get some momentum in this early portion of the game, and it just wouldn't fall. And that was a pass that was a little bit too cute, and Union forces the turnover. And driving down on the fall away, and that was one of those that just simply slipped out of the hands of Johnson. Excellent defense on the part of McKendry. Chance of defense from the Bulldog bench. Curl pattern nicely blocked, but they may call goaltending on Little Page. And they do. They say it was on the downward flight. And so give that basket to Boltman. And a 4-2 McKendry lead. This is one of those contests that here we are, not quite on Thanksgiving Eve, but we'll probably just have a group of 30-second cousins in the stands tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, the students are all gone, as well as, you know, there are a lot of people who are already headed out of town for Thanksgiving trip, so we've got a pretty slim turnout tonight, but that should pick up uh, as we get to December and then portions of the post-Christmas period. And it's Parks who wanted to go for that three. They're down to eight on the shot clock. And on the inside, Gidgel with the hook. He gets that rainbow hook going, and it's a tie game at four. Zerlini, you got two Serbians in this starting lineup. And they go to the corner. The long three is there. Very, very smoothly delivered by Vicentic. 
A 7-4 lead for the Bearcats. It's a pretty good little haul from Lebanon, and so I know they are glad this is Thanksgiving week. Union is on break this week all the way across. It's no more of that three days on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. They've, they've been off, actually, we like to say since Saturday afternoon, or Friday afternoon, to be honest with you, when classes ended. And they kick it back to Powell. Powell is one who can shoot from anywhere on the floor, and he's going to do it right now. The fall away, no foul called on it, and he decks the three, and McKendry takes the lead 10-4. They're one of the strongest powers in mid-America, and don't let their record deceive you at all. Good spin move, and Little Page could not get it high enough into that square above the glass. Fall away is there. That's what I talked to you about, about Powell, and Dave Niven's going to take time out. Powell just burning them, and McKendry out to a 13-4 lead, so let's take this time out. We realize you have a busy lifestyle, and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Bank of Jackson, one of our fine sponsors. We hope that you'll go by and see any and all of them and tell them how much you appreciate Union University basketball being brought to you on uuathletics.com on E Plus TV6 and E Plus TV6.com, as well as on the Roku app, Stream On. And so we've got a lot of friends from around the country and over in Canada. That's actually a Canadian app, and they've picked us up, and we are delighted to be part of that. Well, George Suggs has to be very happy with what he's seeing in the early going, and Dave Niven called that quick timeout because of the fact that all of a sudden there were three threes being burned on them, and You had Powell and Vicentic between the two of them, and they were long-distance threes. And so Dave had to just see if he can settle his troops down. 13-4, to they trail. And we got 16.04 to go, and there's going to be a media timeout on the next stop of the action. And this is one of those situations that particularly it's an opponent that even though Union has played them many times in the past, uh, these guys have not really seen McKendry since last year when McKendry defeated the Bulldogs up in Lebanon, Illinois. And some of the Bulldog roster has not seen them at all. And they go to Gidgel, who's going to work one-on-one and draws the foul on Carson Parker. Parker is a junior from Nashville, Illinois. A 6'5", junior. So Bulldogs to play it underneath. Again, they're working the perimeter. They're double-teaming Parks, and he's having a hard time getting movement in the paint. Down to eight on the shot clock. Gidgel off the back of the iron, and right there for that rebound is Zerlini. And they stay outside the perimeter, too. They can just burn you with the threes. And Boltman, who is, again, one of their top scorers, and they go to the outside. Powell almost decked another one, but the rebound comes off to Gidgel. Union is usually a very patient team, and despite getting down by nine, they are going to stay very much in their discipline. 12 on the shot clock, fall away, and Gidgel, that was one of those just anticipating that Parker was right on his heels, and Parker commits his second foul. And they're getting set to check in Hayden Meeks, who is from Adelaide, Australia. He's a 6'7 sophomore. Gidgel on the season so far is a 76% free throw shooter. 
And right now, Union will take anything it can get. Big guy must have had a real culture shock when he came to play in West Tennessee after being from Southern California. And what poise. And they tried to get, and that was a tremendous job on the backside. Union's defense, but trying to get it cross court, and Gidgel had not enough authority on that. Union getting back quickly on defense. Almost tossed away, but underneath, trying to find the... And he did. He just found the movement. And Vicentic now with nine points to lead the entire game. And Union back down by 10, 15 to 5. This is the first time at home that the Bulldogs have had this kind of challenge this early in a game. And again, throttling defense. Playing a bit of zone is... This McKendry team. There's constant movement and rotation in their offense. And that goes right into the hands of DeBuck. Turnover number two. And DeBuck may take it all the way and draws the foul. And actually, that was a pretty smart foul by Davitkov. Alexander Davitkov, who is a Serbian as well. He's a 6'1 senior, and so going to the line for two is J.T. DeBuck. And this place is about like, it's almost like a COVID crowd in here because you have such a small group. That may be the quietest this gym has ever been with a game in progress. You would have thought that they were actually trying to pay tribute to someone. And DeBuck gets them both. And Union has needed that. They are so far in the contest three of four from the free throw line. They've only had two field goals. He's working one-on-one against DeBuck and going to the deck hard, and that was just a slip by Meeks. Not an intentional toss away. He just simply slipped on the canvas out there and so Union with a chance to try to capitalize off the third turnover as I mentioned Saturday you can always tell DeBuck because he has the most flowing hair of anybody on the Bulldogs and here goes Little Page determined puts his floater up and it's off the back of the iron and here comes McKendry like a house of fire open for the three no it's too far outside by Davitkov And the jumper. DeBuck got it to fall. Six for JT. Vicentic is the game's leader with nine, but Union has finally closed it back to a six-point deficit. And we're approaching the 12-30 mark in this first half. Very, very quickly played. Smooth delivery by Davitkoff. That's his first three of the game, and it's an 18-9 margin again. Yvonne Prug in the game now, and tying him up. That's excellent defense on the part of Eric Powell II. Newsom just drove right into him, and he held it off. And checking back in is going to be Meeks. Well, they're going to give the alternate possession to Union, so the Bulldogs get a break. 18-9, to nine, they're down. Inside to Little Page, and he's going to work one-on-one. Tries a double spin move and draws the foul. Now, the question is, are they going to say that it was before he was in the act of shooting? Now, they're going to let him go to the line, so he'll have to. Jeremiah was, I tell you, he was redefining the spin move right there. He's a sports management major here at Union and gets the friendly roll. And Jeremiah had a 22-point game 
uh, last Thursday night here at Fred DeLay. That was his biggest game of his career as a Bulldog. And nails the other one, so it's back to the seven-point margin. But this McKenzie, this McKendry team just plays with very, very smooth precision. George Suggs has a, a tremendous machine out there. Union playing a tight man-to-man. They're 10 on the shot clock, and they go deep inside, and they're behind the defenders. And Powell, that was a tremendous defensive move on the part of Little Page, and they're going to have another 20. It did manage to touch the iron. And timeout is called with 11.38 remaining in the first half. And it is McKendry, 18, Union, 11. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member of FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Dave Niven trying to give his team some adjustments. Trailing seven here in the first half with 11.38 to go. And I want to remind everybody, we will be here Saturday afternoon for a post-Thanksgiving conference doubleheader as Union will be taking on West Georgia. And so that comes your way starting at 1.45 on Saturday afternoon on all of our network. Whether it's UUAthletics.com, E Plus TV6 in Jackson, Tennessee, E Plus TV6.com, or that Roku app called Stream On. And if you haven't downloaded the Roku app, do that. Just go to your Roku account and type in Stream On, download that app, and you can see us wherever on your big screen at home. So a new 20 on the clock. And to toss it in is going to be Bryson Boltman, the 6'5 senior. This McKendry team in the early going, they just do not make a lot of mistakes. That was a dangerous pass, but there's the jumper for the three, and it's off the back of the iron for Boltman. All right, let's see what kind of magic DeBuck can pull. And Proog just took his eyes off of it and lost it. He was double teamed in the middle. So Union, third turnover. That's three mistakes for each team. McKendry with that long-distance shooting ability, has that's been the real factor in this game. Four out of seven. Union's missed the only two from outside, and that's Powell and almost nailed another one. And that is Ty Parks just being aggressive to keep that ball in the Bulldogs' possession. And Parks had nobody in the paint to deliver to. They've done a good job of defending Gidgel. Down to 10 on the shot clock, so DeBuck's going to have to do something fast. Pulled away and just was no room for him. They've got Jordovich in at the post. And from the corner. And again, off the mark. So they've missed their last three from outside, and that has given Union the equivalent of a turnover each time. And they work that perimeter. And trying the long bomb. It does not drop, and the rebound comes off to Meeks. So the scoring has cooled off a bit as we've got less than 10 minutes to go here in the first half of play from Fred DeLay Gym in Jackson, Tennessee. And the jumper for the three is again curling off the back of the iron for Hensler. That's Luke Hensler from Acauville, Illinois. So we haven't had a basket in this game in... About two and a half minutes, and a foul on that drive is charged to Parker, and that is his third. Well, it appears that it's going to be charged to Hensler instead. 
the official was holding up two fingers, but he also had a a zero in his other hand. So that's on Hensler. So it's not a third foul on Parker. But the second foul on Hensler, so they'll have him down. Union's committed only one foul in the entire contest. The jumper is in and out. They had Emmanuel Newsom in there, and he couldn't get it to drop. So everybody has grown a little ice cold. And again, trying to drive that paint, and that's going to be an offensive foul. And that looked to be a bit too much indecision on the part of Davitkov. He was trying to find an open player, and I think he was uncertain whether he was going to try to drive around his defender or dish off, and it ended up that he commits the offensive foul. So it's the fourth turnover of the game for McKendry. Newsom's going to slow the tempo down again. We have now gone three and a half minutes without a score. Gidgel, who has just not been able to get anything going tonight, but he goes for a mom, and it's way right, and the foul is on Yordovich over the back. That's only the second personal foul for the Bulldogs. Union is 0 for 5 in three-pointers so far, with 8.42 remaining, trailing 18 to 11. And this is just the most anemic output from the floor for Union so far, 25% from the field, 3 out of 12. A lot of one-shot possessions for both teams. Now, if you can make them drop, particularly those long threes that they had in succession that McKendry did, and that one's off the back of the iron once again. And saved and going for the bomb, and again it is off the... And it gets the friendly roll. That was like Plinko on the Price is Right, the way that one dropped. So Davis, Malcolm Davis from Jefferson City, Missouri, nails the three. 21-11, 21 to 11, 12 of their 21 points, and tossing it aside, unfortunately. And the Bulldogs are just having a hard time with precision at all tonight, and we've got timeout on the floor. McHenry is leading it 21 to 11. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Are you looking for a Christian college or starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed. Well, I'd love to give you a better report if you're a Union fan, but you got to be just honest about it. Union is being outshot by McKendry, 47 to 23 percent, and they are being out rebounded, 11 to 8 in the game. And it is just one of those that the Bulldogs have not been able to launch a three to go in. They've missed all five, but McKendry has had five out of 12 and 15 of its 21 points have come from behind the arc. So Union has got to do a better job of defending uh, the long-distance shot. And looking across the board, Vicentic is still the game's leader with nine points. Six for DeBuck. He's Union's leader. But you've only had three Bulldogs to even be able to get into the scoring column and we have played 12 of the 20 minutes of this half as I say there have been very few trips to the free throw line so it has been a very swiftly played first half and McKendry trying to pad that lead and Powell sure wanted to pull the trigger couldn't hold on to it well enough just look at the constant motion of this offense there's a steal And let's see if he can take it all the way down, and he does. Lance Sarver takes it all the way down. Lane Sarver takes it all the way down, the freshman from New Madison, Ohio, and let's see if that gives the Bulldogs a turnaround. Fall away. Just rolling off to the right, and Little Page with a rebound off the miss by Boltman. 
Well, let's see if that coast-to-coast -coast can make a difference for the Bulldogs, maybe give them a little momentum. There's just not a whole lot of a home crowd here to help them tonight as far as enthusiasm from the stands. And picking it back up is Parks. you got to hand him for his resilience. Sarver, it just rims off to the right, and the rebound comes off again to Zerlini. Powell, we just keep waiting on him to let fly tonight. He's got six, and both of them have all six points have come from behind the arc. McKendry by eight, and we got six and a half to go here in this first half of play. They got a hurry, two on the shot clock, and it's off the back of the iron. So let's see if the Bulldogs can convert off of that 27% from the floor. Four out of 15, and Powell will be charged with his first foul. And so that will put Union at least in the one and one. And it's Lane Sarver at the line. He's a freshman, 6'6", newcomer to this Bulldog team. He started a game so far in the young season. And let's see if he can deliver. And he gets the friendly roll. It looked like it was going to be short. Six of the 14 points Union has have come from the free throw line. And that morgue sound here in the place. <laughs> Very quiet, 21 to 15. Union's not pressing as hard tonight as we have seen in some of their conference games. Now, that's not to say they won't at some point, and that foul is going to be on the backside. The offensive foul is charged to Vicentic. That is his first. So, with it being the offensive foul, Union will play it underneath. And let's see if they can pick up off that sixth turnover by McKendry. So far, Union with four points off turnovers, and you want to get at least one per turnover, and they're a little bit under that mark tonight. Almost a wild pass, but Union saves it. Parks trying to go between two defenders, can't get the ball to go off the glass properly. And here goes Powell, and he is just... He is everywhere, almost out of control, but he draws the foul. And the foul is charged to J.T. DeBuck. That is his second and only Union's third of this first half with 5.26 remaining. So the Bearcats will play it underneath, leading by six. But a very low-scoring game up to this point. And open for the three. And bounding off. They've missed eight of their last nine threes, but they still have a six-point lead in the contest. And going for the bomb. And again, it is short. So Union 0 of 7 from the field, just a complete goose egg. And tipped away, and so that is turnover number seven. And DeBuck tried to go all the way and can't get it up softly, but the tip is there for Jeremiah Littlepage. So Littlepage with four, and Union has closed it to within four. Here you go. Zerlini going to work one-on-one -on -one against Parks and turns and fires and banks. That was just perfect precision he released the ball at the proper time and had the perfect angle for it to drop. Six-point lead now. As we say, McKendry played. They've switched off from man-to-man -to, -man to zone, and there you go. That's going to be an opportunity for a three-point play, the lightning-fast speed of J.T. DeBuck. He's got eight, and if he hits this free throw, he will now be Tied with Vicentic as the game's leader with 4-10 remaining. DeBuck is 2-for-2 two two from the line tonight. Union 7-of-8. That's its one bright spot as far as the offense is concerned. They're still being out-rebounded 14-12. to 12.
the quiet time as DeBuck delivers. <laughs> Unions cut it to three, 23 to 20. It has been a very, very slow chipping away at the bark. <clears throat> as we say, they force seven turnovers, and that's number eight. <clears throat> so unforced errors for McKendry. <clears throat> They're making a difference to let Union get back into this one. And here's Prug. He's double teamed. Down to 340 in the first half. And that one just went nowhere. And that was simply a case. DeBuck was expecting somebody to cut, and they didn't. And it was right into the middle of traffic. 339 remaining. It is McKendry now leading 23 to 20. We'll be back in a few moments. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Go by Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. They're open for service on Saturdays all day. So if you got a problem and you need some repairs or you need an oil change, whatever, just go by and see them. And while you're there, look at some of the new models they've got. they got a ton of them, a bunch of Chevy trucks. It is really a fine place. So go by Jones Chevrolet up on Three Way. Well, it's 23-20, to and as we say, this has just been a rather sluggish game so far as far as, in many categories, both these teams because you had McKendry out to a 10-point lead, and then suddenly they've grown cold from the three-point line. They were at one point, four out of five from behind the arc, and they have missed eight of their last nine. And out of their 23 points... 15 of them have been on threes. So off the turnover, and Union is going to go to the press now and see if they can make, and there it is. There's one trying to go all the way in. The left-hander just does not go. Johnson thought he had it, and he couldn't get it up high enough. This could be a four-point turnaround, maybe even a five. Oh, so many opportunities. Union has had to close this within one and has not been able to navigate the waters. Nobody picked him up from the corner, and still Davis misses the three. So Union could look on that as the equivalent of a turnover. Dangerous pass across court. and Little Page with it. We're under three minutes. Gidgel. On the inside, and he just moved his defender aside. Boltman just could not stay with Gidgel, and now we got a one-point game with 2.40 to go. Getting a little bit of energy back off of that Bulldog bench. Two and a half remaining. And again, there's a lot of physical activity out there. Union again with that tough man-to-man, down to four on the shot clock, and stolen. It's Sarver with the steal. They got a two-on-two, a three-on-two. Now they got to back off. And the foul, trying to steal that one away. It was Zerlini, and that is his first foul. But Union is now in the double bonus. So they have an opportunity to take the first lead of the game that the Bulldogs have had, and this will be Jalen Johnson, who has been held scoreless tonight. Jalen with an 11-point average on the season. And he's a 77% free throw shooter. And gets it. And we are tied for the first time since the game started. And an opportunity, this place will get extremely quiet. We ask you to at home. And Union leads for the first time at 2-11 remaining. It's 24-23. Union with a 20-10 run in the last 14 minutes. But still a very low-scoring affair. And trying to get by Little Page, and there was no room in the end. 
And you see at least some energy coming from the Bulldog bench trying to get a little noise. Down to three on the shot clock. Powell, high arcing three is there. And for Powell, that is his third three of the game to give the lead back to McKendry. Sarver underneath. He overshot it, but he found the foul from behind. A late whistle, and you can tell George Suggs isn't happy with it, but they are going to charge that one. It looks to be to Boltman, and that is his second. That was a very late call, and so it is Sarver to the line. He's had two free throws tonight. And give him three. That was like one of his previous ones that just got the friendly roll. He went to Tri-Village High School. And he has tied it up. And Union is 12 of 13 from the free throw line tonight. And that is what has kept them in it. And that's going to be charged to Sarver. They tried to dish that pass off. And the foul is called on Sarver. That is only the fourth team foul on the Bulldogs in the half, and so there's no bonus, and he was not in the process of shooting. So Boltman will toss it in. This guy averaging 16 a game. Big three, jumper, off the mark. 70 seconds remaining in the first half, and DeBuck gets them down quickly. Little Page tries his spin move and traveling. They say he changed his pivot foot. Dave Niven off the bench did not care for that call. So for the Bulldogs, turnover number six. You've had ten for McKendry. And Union's not going to do a tight press this time. They spread the offense out, trying to get by Gidgel, but they can't do it. On the inside, and great block by Little Page. Timed it perfectly against Vicentic. 40 seconds remain in the first half. Big long three. No, off the mark. And Union still has not hit a three in this contest. They are absolutely goose egg for eight from behind the arc. And he had a good look at that one. Nobody was anywhere close to challenging him. It has been a bit of a struggle for the threes for the Bulldogs so far this season. They came in 31% tonight, but I don't think they expected that they were going to miss everything here in the first half, and Union is going to try a bit of a half-court trap this time. McKendry's done a good job of spreading out its offense to try to contend with that press and hoping to get somebody open. Little Page, can, he can come inside, stay inside, or he can come outside. He's, he's excellent on both ends of the defensive end. They're down to five on the shot clock. Somebody's got to let it fly, and they do. And it's off the back of the iron, and what a tip in. That was an exclamation point for Zerlini. My goodness, nobody could have expected that as that thing just bounded high and he just reached up and slammed it home. Exclamation point indeed. And for Zerlini, (laughs) that's four points in the game, but that's one he'll remember and the folks here in the gym will remember. So that gives McKendry a 28-26 lead. At halftime, their lead was as much as 10 a couple of times during this first half in this rather low-scoring affair. Uh, Let me give you the scoring for McKendry. The leaders are Vicentic and Powell. They both have nine. And you got a couple of guys that got three, and Zerlini with that last basket gave him four. So they've had five Bearcats to score tonight, but it's been Powell and Zerlini. And once again, we'll tell you that 18 of their 28 points have been from behind the arc. For Union, you got nine for DeBuck and six for Sarver, the freshman coming in and doing a nice job, particularly at the free throw line, and Bo Gidgel with five. 
but they've held Ty Parks completely scoreless. And holding Gidgel to five is another tremendous effort in and of itself. Uh, Gidgel has picked up six rebounds to be the leader in the contest tonight. So we will take it to the locker room with Union down 28 to 26, and it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments both these coaches make in the second half. Right now for our halftime feature, we are going to show you some highlights as we will periodically during this period leading up to Christmas. We're going to show you some highlights of Union University's bicentennial celebration, the Union campus now 200 years of history that date back just so many different things that have happened in their history that has been so varied and so storied and so tonight we're going to show you that that includes a marvelous musical celebration in the chapel here at the Union campus so here we go celebrating the bicentennial when I think of the timeline of Union University. It is a complicated history. Jackson Mill Academy to West Tennessee College to Southwest Baptist University to Union University. My name is David Dockery. I was privileged to serve as the 15th president at Union University. This is just a place with a great legacy. I came to Union in 1956 uh, as an undergrad. Graduated in 1960. My wife and myself both of my daughters, one of my son-in-laws, and two of my four granddaughters. My life as a student at Union was a little bit upside down. I was already a registered nurse working at Jackson General. Carla Sanderson, Provost Emerita, Union University. Provost, Chamberlain University. I did liberal arts study primarily. Probably Eldon Bird teaching sociology uh, had the biggest impact on my life and marriage. He mapped out, I was a newlywed, he mapped out the entire what a healthy marriage looks like in a sociology class. I think Union has always had a commitment to learning. I've often marveled that there were people here at Union who were here not simply because they were looking for a job. They were committed to learning along with Christian faith. When I talk about my college days, I label that as four of the best years of my life. Hi, I'm Reggie Thomas. I'm a 1985 graduate of Union University. I felt called to ministry when I was a sophomore in high school, so I began to look at different Christian colleges. Mrs. Wingo, I love that lady. She was one of the recruiters, so she came to my high school one evening and I met her and she began to talk with me about Union. If you're an African-American student and you know 95% of the student body is Anglo, obviously you are going to feel a little out of place. Okay, I think that's just natural. You have two choices. You can isolate or integrate. So I decided I was going to try to integrate. The campus re- reciprocated that so beautifully. I've watched the Union and I wish it well. I mean, my career has moved me from science to college administration and state official and federal official. I'm Wayne Brown. I grew up in Northwest Tennessee at Union City. I was a student at Union University from the fall of 1957 until graduation in 1961. I think of Union a lot. The people at the institution changed my life. There's no question about that. And I owe it. I owe the institution for that and I, I won't I won't forget it. I've had the privilege of serving at five institutions. I love things about each one of those institutions. They're each special. But Union rises to the top easily. What's special about Union are the people that come to work every day with a love for the Lord Jesus Christ a desire to advance the Union mission, concern and care for Union students. And that love, concern and care radiates across the campus, faculty and staff, who have poured their lives, invested their lives into hundreds, thousands of students who will leave that place and go and make a difference for the cause of Christ. True Unionites, that's what makes Union special. Uh, 
I just think there's something exceptional in the spirit uh, and the way students are loved and treated. I treasure what my daughters have experienced, what my granddaughters are, have experienced. I believe every Union University alum has the affiliation with something uh, that the Lord has blessed for generations. Uh, we're a part of something very special. I think you have to say that had it not been for the grace of, of God and of God's hand in and on union, that it wouldn't be where it is if it weren't for them. everyone. It's great to have you here. Please stand and worship with us.
so many historical figures in Union's long, long service to West Tennessee and, frankly, to students from all over the nation and the world. Part of that video that you just saw and that great musical celebration that included so many alums who have been part of the voices of proclamation in past years, and one of them I just happened to recognize was one of my students from the 1990s, Jaina Hollyfield Hall. That was just a marvelous musical celebration. We're going to show you more from the bicentennial observances as we continue on between now and Christmas. Right now, let's go to our halftime stats, brought to you by Worthy Road Studios for the finest in video production and sports in church services and special events. Worthy Road Studios, number one across the board. Well, this is not a spectacular (laughs) stat sheet here. McKendry is... 10 out of 26 for 41%. The Bulldogs have had just the dismal time of it tonight. 7 of 23 for 30%. And they have missed all eight opportunities from behind the arc. It's just been rough from outside. Whereas for McKendry, now they started off and hit four of their first five, but they're, they've whittled down to 33% for, on three-point shots. Free throws, McKendry has not been to the line in the first half, and Union, that's been their real strong suit, 12 out of 13 for 92%. The rebounding has finally evened up each team with 15. McKendry has committed 10 turnovers, Union 6, and the Bulldogs have an 8-2 to two edge in points off turnovers, and most of the time that would indicate a lead in the game, but it's because the Bulldogs have not been able to capitalize from outside in their shooting tonight, that that's why that you are seeing them trailing by two, but they were down by as many as ten. In fact, uh, go back to look at my notes here. Uh, it was fourteen to four, uh, four minutes into the game, and then finally Union got its first lead with two minutes and eleven seconds to go in the first half at twenty-four to twenty-three, and then that exclamation point dunk that we had right at the end, the slam that went through, and that made it a 28-26 McKendry lead. So it's going to look very interesting to see how all of this takes shape in the second half. Reminder again that we're back here on Saturday afternoon. It'll be a Thanksgiving Saturday doubleheader as Union takes on North Georgia. Uh, Pardon me, that's West Georgia. North Georgia is coming in next week. Uh, Union against West Georgia. That'll be a 145 airtime, but Try to be here in person. Uh, We'll be here at 2 and 4 for the tip-offs of those games. And then we've got single games for men and women next Monday and Tuesday night right here at Fred DeLay Gymnasium. So I hope that you'll make your plans to be out here and be with us. If not, join us here live on the Bulldog Network. All right, now we're back here ready for the second half, and it's going to be McKendry with first possession. And this has been, as I say, it has been a more of a grinder type of game. And there you see those lovely young ladies who make sure that everybody is fed very well here at uh, Fred DeLay. We'll talk to their agent about how much they're paid for that appearance tonight. (laughs) And getting set to toss it in is Boltman. And we are underway with the second half. Steve Beverly, glad to have all of you aboard tonight here on this eve of Thanksgiving Eve. And let's see if Dave Niven makes any defensive adjustments here in this half. Open for the three. They left him alone, and he got the fall. That is the second time tonight that McKendry has had a friendly drop, and Boltman gets the three. That's his first one of the game to make it a five-point lead at 31-26. Trying to answer it is Ty Parks, iron unkind. And McKendry on that bicycle. And, boy, they are so quick to curl that pass around. This is one of the most crisp passing teams that you'll see anywhere across mid-America. And here you go with Powell. And he gets it and the foul. And that was a case simply that Jalen Johnson was moving with him. So McKendry already 
is stacking it up here with a long three and a chance for another three-point play, and all of a sudden this two-point lead could be eight. Powell attempting to get into double figures for the first time tonight, and he does. So here we go. It is a... uh, an eight-point lead at 34-26, to 26, the largest of the game for McKendry was 10. That happened twice. So the Bulldogs have to get off the deck after giving up those first six points and trying to get some of them back. And again, the iron unkind for JT to buck. JT 0 for 2 from behind the arc. And, oh, no call on that one, and... I think that was one of those cases where Zerlini, knowing that he probably got away with the travel, and he threw that pass just a little bit too high for his teammate to catch up with. So a turnover, and that's number 11. And let's see how Union's going to play this one. They have got to make more opportunities off turnovers. 15 on the shot clock, and the jumper is there. Ty Parks, and that is his first basket of the game. they got to get him hot in this second half. Still a six-point lead for McKendry. And they answer it right back to make it an eight-point lead once again. Union's had only one lead in the game at 24 to 23. Powell is charged this time to Powell. That is his second. They got a bunch of players over on the other side that have two fouls on them. Davitkov, Boltman, Parker, and Hensler. Two of them starters, two of them off the bench. They go inside to Gidgel. And he is fouled. And let's see who the call is going to be on. That is going to be on Zerlini. That is his second. So Union will play it underneath. Bo Gidgel was named by the Tennessee Sports Writers Association as the player of the week for this past week. And our congratulations to Bo. Well deserved. He had two outstanding games. And that one just simply went off the fingertips of JT, and so it is turnover number seven for the Bulldogs, and that could allow this McKendry team to get back up to its largest lead and open for the three and just out of the cylinder for Powell. That would have been his fourth trifecta of the evening. The kick out to Gidgel, and he cannot make it fall. Union still cannot drop one. 0 for 10 tonight from behind the arc, and Little Page double teamed. And the floater is there. Ty Parks finally getting himself into the action, and he's closed it to within six. <clears throat> Bulldogs staying man to man. And it's Powell wide open in the corner, and he cannot deliver. And Union with two on two. And, ah, right on the lip. And Gidgel cannot get the follow. That's Parks instead. This time it's the Buck. No good on the three. And finally, with the fourth opportunity at the basket, it is Gidgel connecting. They had four opportunities and finally connected. And the foul is on Zerlini, and that is his third. Well, that's what you call determination. The resilience just kept going back and back and back, and finally a chance at a three-point play. And it lips out, but it is Little Page. No, but he'll go to the line for two. Oh, my goodness. That was like Wheel of Fortune ending up bankrupt. But he'll have two opportunities, 16-12 remaining, and George Suggs decides he wants to take a timeout. And as he does, we will too. Union has closed it to within 36 to 32.
Dave Niven, again, trying to give his team the best coaching and, and particularly telling them to stay mentally focused, as they did certainly with that four opportunities at the basket and finally connecting, and then get another offensive rebound with a chance to deliver more points. And they're trailing by four here, 36-32, to 32, but the one stat that they would love to wipe off tonight, 0 for 11 in three-pointers. I've never seen a union team of any kind to have that rough a night, and we're this far into the second half, four minutes into it. McKendry is seven out of 21. Now, they were four out of five, so they are, they are only three of their last 16, but they've got seven on the boards tonight. 21 of their 36 points have been three-pointers. So it is Little Page. He has four in the game. DeBuck is the leader for Union with nine. Powell, the leader for McKendry with 12, and Vicentic with 11. And Jeremiah goes off to the right. So an opportunity now to try to at least cut it back to a three-point margin. Lots of time remaining here. Union has done a good job on the boards, and they've had some good defensive stops. But it's just those open threes that they've allowed McKendry to connect on that have been really the pain in the neck for them tonight. 16 on the shot clock. And open for the three. Nope, it's up too far right, and Little Page for the rebound. Jeremiah with five. Sarver back in the lineup now. He wanted to pull up and hit that three that would have tied the game. And it is Parks. The reverse layup does not go. He does not get it high enough into the square. Open for the three. And Powell does not get the friendly roll that time. And Union on the fast break. Gidget working one-on-one. And he gets between his defenders, and it still will not drop. And the foul. Union is shooting under 30% for the game. The foul is charged to Gidgel. That is only his second and only the second team foul in this half. And we got 15.04 remaining, and we have timeout. McKendry still leads Union 36 to 33. How about listening to this message of interest? We realize you have a busy lifestyle. And at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, back we are tonight. Union's three-point shooting has been like finding a box of cereal that you've had on the shelf for about a year, and you open it up, and there are a bunch of weevils that come out of it. It has just been, <laughs> it has just been a night like I have never seen Union have. They've been great from the free throw line, 13 of 16 for 81%. And one of the key things is they have committed very few personal fouls in this game, only six. Only two in this half in trying to keep McKendry from getting in any kind of a bonus situation. That, frankly, may be the best hope for Union tonight is to quickly get into the bonus and try to start driving in and drawing some more fouls. It's Boltman who will toss it in. And Union goes back into its press. Now the two upcourt guys tend to back off now, but they're trying to see if they can. They, they manage to get it over with two seconds to spare. Again, constant motion in this offense. And overshooting the layup was Vicentic. So Union with another free pass here. DeBuck. 
and Sarver. Now, Jeremiah can pull up from outside. He's not a three-point shooter. Now, they've got him working one-on-one. And he turns and fires and cannot get it to fall on the rebound to Parker. Oh, this has been just an ice-cold night for the Bulldogs. And right behind Little Page, taking it all the way down. And did you see how quickly Boltman got back down the floor on defense? Man, he was a sprinter. Five-point lead for McKendry, 14 minutes remaining. But still a very low-scoring affair. And going for the three. No, it is still not there for Prug. And going for the three on the other side, and it is there. Meeks with his first three. They are 8 of 24, and... 33% may not sound all that hot, but it sure sounds great when your opponents are 0 for 12 from behind the arc. And it's back to that eight-point lead again for McKendry. Union's going to have to get some stops, but start making some of these inside baskets now. It's Sarver, well short, and the rebound to Vicentic. It's like an Amana side-by-side for the Bulldogs right now. Going for the three again. Yep, right there is Meeks. Two in a row, and Dave Niven says we got to stop it and talk it over. Just under 13 minutes remaining. McKendry now with its largest lead at 44-33. to We'll be back in 30 seconds. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, think about this. Just two and a half minutes ago on the game clock, Union was trailing 36 to 33 and had the ball and had an opportunity potentially at another three-point play that could have tied this game and as it has happened all game long they've missed all 13 of their three-point shots now coming into the game tonight let me just show you where this is coming into the game tonight the Bulldogs were averaging 31 percent it's not a great percentage from outside And this is a team that's more built to try to drive it home and get those inside shots and also get them in from 10, 12, 14 feet. But 31%, I mean, if you had even 31% tonight, that would have been at least three three three-pointers. Coming in tonight, the Bearcats were 38%. They're close to their average, 9 out of 25 But Union has just been fighting an uphill battle virtually all night long. So let's see how Dave Niven plays this one. This is a crucial possession off the timeout. You'd say you'd hope they would get a three, but you frankly hope they'll get anything. And they do. Parks with that spin move. He drives it home and has an opportunity at a three-point play. It's been a rough night for him. He's only 3 of 11 from the floor. He's picked up seven rebounds, but this three-point play would be big to close it back to eight. And he delivers. That was Park's first attempt from the free throw line tonight in Union 14 of 17 from the stripe. They're double-teaming the ball again but getting behind the defenders, and that's so high that it just had no hope. And let's see who the foul is on. It looks like they're going to charge that one to Sarver. So at the line is going to be Meeks. Meeks with those two three-pointers has six tonight. And he's just been a steady performer off the bench. The young man from Australia, and it gets it back to a nine-point margin. Powell remains the game's leader with 12. 
and in and out. Well, I'm sure Union will take two for one, anything they can, to whittle this lead down a bit more. Still lots of time, 12-20 remaining in the contest. DeBuck, Union's leader with nine points tonight. Down to seven on the shot clock, and there's a high floater that goes. Well, DeBuck makes that one. That one floated forever before it dropped. And it's back to a seven-point lead, so Union gets a two-for-one, and Gidgel, after a quick rest, is going to check back in. Going for the three. Meeks is almost unstoppable right now. That's 10 for him, and the lead is back to 10 for McKendry. Union has not been able to get on any distinctive run tonight, and again, yet another miss from outside. And a double spin move short gets the offensive board. And the foul, that is the 16 foul, uh, McKendry. So this is not going to be a bonus opportunity. The foul is charged to Meeks, and that is his first. And we have timeout. 11-19 to go. It's back to the 10-point margin for McKendry. We'll return in just a moment. Are you looking for a Christian college or a starting the college search process? I want to take a second to tell you about my school, Union University in Jackson, Tennessee. Union is a private four-year university known for its rigorous academics, Christ-centered community, and the success of its graduates. My favorite part about Union is the faculty. The professors here are so intentional about helping students grow not only academically, but also spiritually. You should check out Union for yourself. Come for a visit. I know you'll love it. At Union University, you'll be transformed. Well, Dave Niven trying to go back to the drawing board once again and see what he can dial up. Uh, I know this has been a frustrating one for him because as the Bulldogs seemingly can crawl back into it and get within two, three points, and then all of a sudden it's back to a double-digit deficit once again as McKendry leads it 48-38. to 38. Let me give you the, some of the stats right now. McKendry 18-40 of 40 for 45% from the floor. Union just in. This is outs, inside as well as outside. Ice cold night, 12 out of 41 for 29%. Three-pointers, this is the big margin because McKendry has picked up 10 out of 26 for 39%. Union is just, it's a goose egg. 0 for 14 in threes. Bulldogs 82% from the free throw line, and they lead in rebounding 28 to 24. But they have not been able to connect from outside, and that has been a killer this evening. Even three of those three-pointers that they have missed. And they would even be barely at 20% at that point, but that would have them within one point in this game. Almost tipped away. They got a hurry. They're down to five on the clock. And the foul. And that is a huge one right there because Union may have run out of time. That is the third foul on Parker. Boltman, Zerlini, and Parker all with three fouls. So now in the bonus, it's the one and one. It's critical to get the first end of it. It's Ty Parks from Pocahontas, Tennessee. And Ty connects. Two out of two tonight from the line in Union 15 of 18 for 83%. That's been the, that has been the one bright spot offensively for the Bulldogs. We still got 11.02 remaining, and Ty delivers them both. So Ty, who was held scoreless in the first half, now has nine, and Union is closed to within eight, and they are going to have what I call a modified press right now. It was not really terribly intense. And open again is Meeks, and this time almost gets the drop from the top. But when it hit the top of the glass, that was it. So that was a, that was one of those that everybody was holding their breath in because they've had a couple of those tonight that have dropped from going sky high off the iron. They go inside. Gidgel's got 
He had position on his man, and that will send him to the free throw line. And that foul is on Meeks, his second. That is the 20th foul that McKendry has committed tonight. Union has only committed eight. Gitchell takes that deep breath, and they need him. And, again, off the, off the back of the iron. you got to have those front ends of one and ones Union's only committed three personal fouls in the second half, so the free throw line is not what they're terribly worried about right now. Going into the paint, he wants it badly, gets that rainbow hook, and it's not there for Hensler. The buck is so fast getting back down the court. All right, Little Page. They double teamed him, and he just went by that first defender. Little Page with seven. They have closed it within six. Oh, wide open, and they didn't see Parker. He was wide open. And he's still open for a possible three. He's been calling for the ball. Seven on the shot clock. Going for the bomb. No, it's off the iron, but they get the offensive board. Parker comes down with it. And it didn't drop. Gidgel the rebound. That's his ninth tonight. And trying to take it all the way down, it was kicked away, but Union has it back. Union, plenty of time to navigate the line. And Gidgel tried to save it, and it goes off of his fingertips. Now, one thing that Dave Niven does, and we're going to give you more detail on this before Saturday's game, but Dave and his assistant, Easton Bazzoli, they log hustle points in every game. That would have been one of them right there, even though he didn't get possession of the ball. And the foul is going to be on Ty Parks. Parks commits his first of the game. That's only the fourth for Union. But hustle points, if you're going after a ball like that, or let's say you go after and are so, uh, you're, and it's picked up by Little Page. I'll pick up that conversation in a minute. Right down the middle, and it gets to Parks, who beat it quickly down the floor. He's in double figures with 11, and Union has closed it within four. Chance of defense from the Bulldog bench once again. Cheerleaders have gone home for Thanksgiving, and so they got to get any kind of spirit they can. And underneath, that was tremendous driving by Parker. That's his first basket of the game. Back to the six-point lead. And again, Union has been shut out from behind the arc tonight. Gidgel's going to try it himself. Puts it off the glass. Doesn't get it. Parker again. Those quick hands. Comes down with a rebound. And it is. And let's see who they. We're at the eight-minute mark, and we're going to have a timeout. We'll check the foul on it, and we'll be back with more right after this. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at Jones Chevrolet Humboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Dave Niven, on every timeout, has had to just re-stress the key things. I was telling about hustle points. One is if you were going after the ball like Ty Parks tried to to retrieve it just a few moments ago. If you get a steal and are able to take it all the way down for a breakaway basket. There's about four or five different categories that they look for, and 
that's part of how they grade these players for their ability to try to keep a game alive, keep a ball alive, even when it looks as though that you don't have an opportunity to do that. And we'll give more. We've got more on that because, Dave, we did an interview with him earlier today, and he really explained that in a lot more depth. But tonight he would do anything if they just get hustle points that go in the basket, not just for a grade. So we're down to eight minutes. McKendry will play it underneath after the foul. Union still has no one in foul trouble. Oh, my. The big lob and the stuff by Zerlini, and it's Zerlini, and it's back to an eight-point lead. That was a four-point turnaround. Union had a chance to cut it to four, and now it's back to an eight. The first three of the game, and it's Ty Parks. He has 14. Union now one of 15 from behind the arc. They need about three or four more of those. But they can't give away those stuffs like they just did on the previous possession. 7.20 to go. Right down the baseline. Just beat all the defenders. Boltman with seven. And it's back to a seven-point lead. Gidgel. He's open. Tries the three. Got it. Gidgel for three. He has ten. So finally, the three-point line is awakened. 54-50 to with 6.45 remaining. Now, thinking about the three himself was Boltman, and they left him wide open, and he did not get it to drop, but gets the offensive board. They did not box out. Big three for Powell. I think that guy could shoot him from 60 feet if he has time to get his feet set. He is four of ten from behind the line. Little page, and he had it blocked. They got it on the upward flight of the ball. Nice block on the backside by Parks. And Parks cannot get it to drop. It's Union's ball. Parks had the opening, and it would not fall. Oh, my goodness. You've seen so many opportunities that this Bulldog team has had tonight to make a good, steady run. And the only lead they've had lately has been late in the first half, 24-23. to 23. All right, let's see how Niven plays this one. It's Parks. They're down to 12 and the foul. They're still in the one and one, so they have to get the front end. The foul is charged to Zerlini, and that is his fourth. So it's Gidgel, transfer from Prairie View A&M at the line. It's still a one and one. And checking back in now is Meeks. He'll take over for Zerlini, who comes out with the four fouls. This first one is a critical one for Gidgel. And he missed. Union is 16 of 21, but that is the third time tonight that they have missed the front end of a one and one. And Dave Niven scratching his head about that call. That is the 16 foul of the half for the Bulldogs. And here's a key thing. This is a 75% free throw shooting team, these Bearcats. So you have no free ticket with them. There you go. And Union's got a three-on-three, but all the way down for the stuff. String music it is for Ty Parks. Back to the five-point lead. 5.20 remaining in Union with another steal. 
22nd turnover. Union slows it down. They haven't been able to get any real strong breakaway transition baskets tonight except for a couple of times down the floor here in the second half. Little Page going for the three. No, it's off the mark. Parks gave it a good run, but Hensler the rebound, and Union fritters away another opportunity to slice this one. This is just one of those games that you just get the eerie feeling that it's not going to happen, but still four and a half minutes remain. Going for the bomb. Yes, sir. Boltman at a crucial time makes it 60 to 52. And he has 10. DeBuck wanted it down low underneath. Parks between two defenders gets it to fall. Parks, who had nothing in the first half, has 18 now. 60 to 54. And again, Union just seemingly cannot close it. And that one's offensive rebound once again. Look at the intensity of Boltman just going back the second time with four hands on him. Back to the eight-point lead with three and a half remaining. Dave Niven said he wanted them to have a tough non-conference opponent. Well, they've got it here tonight with this McKendry team. Almost on the end line, and they were very fortunate from that one. And DeBuck cannot make it go. Got the rebound. Parks. It is Newsom. New. Uh, it just seems to be frittering away for the Bulldogs tonight as we close to the three-minute mark. Eight-point lead for McKendry, which is in no big hurry unless they just get a wide-open good look. They played solid workmanlike basketball tonight. And they've delivered 12 three-pointers to only two for Union. There you go once again. Davitkov with his third three of the night. And Union trails 65 to 54. We'll be back after this. We realize you have a busy lifestyle. And at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, that was the 13th three that McKendry has delivered in this game tonight, and Union has only been able to counter with two from long distance. And McKendry shooting 46% to 34 for the Bulldogs. So far, the game's leader is Ty Parks with 18, and for McKendry, it's 15 for Eric Powell the second, and 11. For Vicentic, 10 for Meeks. But you just look at so many of these players that have delivered from behind the arc. Four for Powell, three for Davitkov, three for Meeks. And they've all come at opportune times when Union appeared to be trying to close the gap. But now this matches the largest lead that McKendry has had of 11. 2.39 2.39 remaining. It is going to take a whirlwind comeback for the Bulldogs, and it has to start right here. They cannot wait until it gets down to the final minute. They're going to have to have one on this possession and get two or three stops almost immediately. And DeBuck gets a little bit of pressure from Davitkov. And the kick going for the three. No, short. It's just not that night for the Bulldogs. Two out of 19. 
And McKendry again taking its time and time out. Well, is it, no, it's a foul that is called on Gidgel. And that puts them in the bonus, and that is not good news if you're a Bulldog fan. And going to the line is Boltman. He has not been there tonight. In fact, McKendry is only two out of three. Make it three out of four. This young man taking his time and makes it four out of five for McKendry. And Boltman in double figures. It's a five possession lead. And that, I don't have to tell you what that's like when you got two minutes to go. And almost a turnover. Dished unto Little Page. They were very fortunate that time. That's nine. And here's where Union is going to have to get a few steals. And I don't know if there's enough time to even navigate that. And you'd go for that and you're running the risk of a foul. And McKendry's just going to skate as much time off the clock as it possibly can. A minute and a half remaining. This would be McKendry's first victory of this young season. All the way down for the floater for Davitkoff, and he is in double figures himself. The fifth Bearcat to reach that margin. Oh, that one's out of there. It's going to be a backcourt violation. That's the kind of night it has been for the Bulldogs. They haven't committed many turnovers, but when they have, it's often been at an inopportune time, and we have 70 seconds remaining, and the Bulldogs apparently are going to go down to their second defeat of the season. And as we mentioned, this will be the first victory for McKendry. They'll be one and two when this one is over with. Final minute of play. And driving the baseline, a little bit high off the glass, and Sarver the rebound. Union can't wait 15 seconds to get something off. There's not enough time realistically as DeBuck connects. He has 13. Well, we're going to get out of this one early tonight, folks. And McKendry is just going to, they can get it down to 15 seconds. And they're just spreading it out. They get it down to 15 seconds before they have to actually take a shot. And Dave Niven is not going to go to the foul fest, and I really respect him for that because it would just be a waste of time. And that one was short for Powell. Union with one opportunity to try to get this one a little bit closer. And down to the last six. And DeBuck's going to take a three. Not there. Kind of night it has been. Union two out of 20 from the free throw line. And McKendry has defeated the Bulldogs 69-58. to Let's take a timeout and we'll come back and we'll wrap things up and give you the player of the game. Buying a home is a major milestone. And at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Well, the players quickly exiting David Blackstock Court and the fans. What numbers we had tonight, of course, as we mentioned, this is... Thanksgiving break for the Union students, and so they've all been gone, many of them actually, since Thursday afternoon. Uh, Don't let Dean Hunter Baker have a conversation about what that means when people have tests scheduled on that last Friday before uh, Thanksgiving break and students decide, well, they just have to be home for something a day early. (laughs) Just never can imagine that. You you didn't do that when you were in school. (laughs) Let's talk about uh, this one tonight. This was one where McKendry, which is, even though they had two losses, they're a very, very tough team in uh, mid-America. And they came in here tonight on a mission. 
but it, it, the, they were helped greatly by the fact that Union couldn't hit anything from outside. There, were, there was a quick run of two consecutive three-pointers from Ty Parks and Bo Gidgel about six and seven minutes left in the game. But tonight, the Bulldogs, two out of 20, they missed their first 16 from behind the arc, and it was just a very, very rough night tonight. Uh, Bulldogs shot 35% from the floor, 20 of 57, but they were two of 20, as I mentioned, from behind the arc, 10%. And free throw line, they were terrific tonight, 16 to 21 for 76%. But at critical points, in the second half, they missed three front ends of one and one. And you can't get that momentum when you start having that happen to you. Bulldogs out-rebounded McKendry 36-35, to but McKendry did a terrific job in getting some second-chance opportunities during the course of the game tonight, and uh, particularly in that second half. Uh, for McKendry, they shot 26 of 57 for 46%. And three-pointers, they were, that, that was the big one tonight. They were 13 of 32 for 41%, which is over their 35% average for the season. But, my goodness, 13 threes in this game, and you can just let that statistic be the one that carries it. They didn't go to the free throw line much, four out of five for 80%, because Union didn't commit many fouls. But uh, that was not a factor. The free throws were not a factor. It was the three-pointers. That were every bit the factor tonight. Uh, We'll give you the scoring. It was Eric Powell II, uh, their leading scorer, who had 15. 11 each for Davitkov from uh, Bryson Baltman and from Milos Vicentic. And then 10 points for Meeks. And he came in and had some great minutes off the bench uh, and had three three three-pointers, and some of them were really at crucial times when Union was making a rally. But uh, looking back at all of this, and we'll come back to them in a minute because one of those players will be the player of the game. For Union, Ty Parks was held scoreless in the first half, uh, and Union was 0 out of 12 in three-pointers in the first half. Uh, But Parks, 7 out of 20 from the floor in the second half. Uh, He could only hit 1 out of 6 three-pointers, but he had 18 points to lead the Bulldogs, and that's pretty close to his 19.7 per game average. 13 for J.T. DeBuck. Uh, He just couldn't put together a mass run of points like sometimes he's capable of doing. 10 points for Bogigil and 10 rebounds. He had a double-double tonight. And 9 points for Jeremiah Littlepage. Ty Parks also added 9 rebounds in the game tonight. So you had some bright spots for the Bulldogs individually, but they just could not put it together from behind the arc and against a team like McKendry, if you're not going to stop them from shooting the threes, then you better get some yourself. And they just couldn't match it up. Outshot 13-2 to two from behind the arc and just figure that as a three-point situation. That's 39-6 to six in points during the game. But our player of the game tonight is going to be for McKendry, and whereas Eric Powell, terrific job, 15 points and five rebounds, you could easily say, Uh, We could give it to him as the leading scorer, but we're going to give it to Bryson Boltman as our Worthy Road Studios player of the game tonight because of his total across the board uh, contributions. He had 11 points, 4 of 10 from the floor. He had one three-pointer. He was 2 for 2 from the free throw line, but 12 rebounds and 8 assists. Now, that's huge. Uh, Those eight assists really were big during the course of this game. But 12 rebounds, and you look at a guy like Boltman, he goes 6'5", but he's not their tallest gun on the floor. Uh, He just did everything tonight very, very well. So we give the Player of the Game Award from Worthy Road Studios to Bryson Boltman, and congratulations to him, the young man from Nashville, Illinois. Well, we will be back here again. On Saturday afternoon, 145 will be our uh, airtime, and then 2 and 4 will be the tip-offs as Union takes on West Georgia in a Gulf South Conference doubleheader. And then we're back here on Monday and Tuesday night next week for single games here at Fred DeLay. And I will see all of you in Jackson, Tennessee, and those of you watching us on E Plus TV 6, I will see all of you starting at 6 o'clock tomorrow night for Steve Beverly's TV Classics 10th Annual Classic Marathon, Thanksgiving Marathon that will start at 6 o'clock tomorrow night, and it goes to 9 o'clock 
on Monday morning. You may have to figure out when I'm going to take a shower between all of those shows. And I'm actually going to interrupt it at 145 Saturday afternoon to do Union basketball. That's the only interruption in the marathon. So hope you'll be with us for that. It's a great way to celebrate the Thanksgiving weekend and enjoy that with your family. The executive producer of Worthy Road Studios is Paul Schultze. And the executive producer of Union University Sports is Stephen Aldridge. Uh, cameras tonight were Eric Inman, Adriana Bolin, and Olivia Barlow. And our ever-cool, ever-present director, Christopher Reasons. And yours truly and Paul Schultze produced tonight's telecast. And our scoreboard graphics came from Will Forrester. And so until we are with you again Saturday afternoon at 145, we wish all of you a wonderful and blessed happy Thanksgiving. And until then, this is Steve Beverly saying so long from the great hub city of West Tennessee.